got like half of you on that. If that, let's try it again. Good morning. We're almost there. Go ahead and stand up with me. Take your hand off. Turn to number 63 with me. Number 63. Oh, how he loves you and me. We're going to sing this chorus together. Let's sing to Jesus this morning. Can we do that? Number 63. Ready, here we go. that I hope you are too go ahead and turn around shake someone's hand welcome them to church on a Sunday morning Heading back to your seats, let's go ahead and get 
Keep that hymnal out if you lost your place. It's number 63. Oh, how he loves you and me. Let's try this together. Ready? over here. Nice. I didn't see you a second ago. Um, <laughs> we're going to try that first chorus one more time. I want you to think about those words. This, this is almost like a junior church song. I love it. It's got so much doctrine in it. Oh, how he loves you and me. What he gave it, he gave his life. What more could he give? You know, I was reading a statement the other day. He who has Christ has all he needs and needs no more. What a powerful statement that is to think that he gave us his life. We don't need anything else. And it's all about Jesus this morning. All he can give us is himself. And it's more than what we need. Oh, how he loves you and me. Let's try that first chorus one more time. Let's lift it up to the Lord this morning. Ready? Oh, how he loves you. glad Jesus loves you. I'm so glad for that. Thank you so much. You may be seated. So we had a great time yesterday. Um, Miss, Mr. Daniel and Miss Jessica, they, they decided to come up with a grand idea of doing a scavenger hunt yesterday with the teenagers. And it was not a normal scavenger hunt where you just put stuff around the church property and go find it. No, you had different teams and you had different drivers. And Mr. Jerry was a driver. I was a driver. Carter was a driver. Isabel was a driver. And uh, we all got to go out, had different teams, three or four people on each team. And we get to drive them to different locations in the Hampton Roads area. Well, not the whole Hampton Roads area, really the peninsula side uh, to a certain limit within about a 20 mile radius. And you might have an option on there. I think one of them was go find, um, take a picture of your team with five different, um, different types of sports balls. So like a football, a baseball, a, a soccer ball, uh, something like that. So where do you think you're going to go for that? Walmart, okay, Wally World is great. Um, <laughs> and so now you might go, there was also a thing on there, there was find a chicken place and take a picture in front of it. Um, there was a place where this was the most, or the second hardest one. You had to find a body of water that was supposed to be a natural body of water, and you could not do anything on the church property. And you had to take a picture of your team with one foot each inside the water, and uh, they had to take a picture of that and send it to Mr. Daniel. Uh, there were several other things on there. The other one, the funny one that I had was um, you had to find a statue and take a picture of your team interacting with the statue. That's not an easy thing to do, I just say. All right? It's, it's kind, of, kind of funny watching them, but uh, we had a great time yesterday. And uh, Mr. Daniel's going to show some pictures or a video this morning. We had the hamburger one, too. Yes, and you'll see some pictures, I think, in that as well. The hamburger one, Mr. Jerry won yesterday with his team. They did a great job. And um, he won't, I won't say he cheated at all, um, you know, but <laughs> he, 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 <laughs> but we had a, had a great time. And uh, Elena was with me. And 
Oh, they left their M&Ms from yesterday. So if you won yesterday, you left your M&Ms, finders, keepers, loopers, or weepers, all right? Um, <laughs> but it's, we're excited. We had a great time. Uh, Mr. Jerry had, they decided they put a thing on there where you had to find, you had to go somewhere and take a picture of a team member eating or taking a bite out of a burger, a juicy burger. That was the way it was phrased, okay? And uh, one of the teams got disqualified because of that. Um, <laughs> but or they did not win because of that. And so... Mr. Jerry, I decided to go to Mickey D's, or my team did, and so went over there, got a, I think it was a double or triple Big Mac or something like that. I learned those aren't actually that big, um, and you get extra points for the biggest burger. Well, Mr. Jerry and Mr. Joey, which I don't know if he's here yet, but apparently he gets the credit, I guess. He came up with the idea of going to Wendy's, and Joey likes getting a, was it triple stack? Triple stack. Um, from a triple dave i think is yeah triple dave's burger from wendy's well joey had the grand idea idea of well, why don't we just get two or three and stack them and so <laughs> they took three oh, was it three three triple stack burgers put them on top of each other and joey had to try to take a bite out of that thing it was hilarious it almost fell in his lap but we had a great time they're going to show a video this morning and then we'll get to the rest of the service We're going to have a special at this time. We actually have two specials this morning. Elizabeth and Amy are going to sing for us a song. Um, this is, I believe, one of Elizabeth's favorite songs. And uh, she's going to sing it for us this morning with Amy. Uh, so let's, let's, give, let's pray for them as they sing. So as many of you know, or some of you guys might know, I hit 23 years in the Air Force on 6 January. And with my current rank, I can only do 424, so I'm getting ready to hang up my boots. Not very excited, but I guess excited all at the same time. But after five deployments, four PCSs, a number of TDYs, whatever else the Air Force has sent my way, there's always been a special friend that has always been there for me and helped me all along the way. We actually heard this song at a ladies' conference in Germany. And Mina Oglesby is the one that sung it. Got to make sure I give her her credit. And the song is called Special Friends. Temptations everywhere But God loves his children And he hears our every prayer And sends a special friend Who always will be there God gives us special friends Forever friends 
ones who know just what to say. God gives us special friends to walk with us along life's way. And oh, how great to know as on we go, there's someone there to share, someone who cares. God gives us special friends who always will be there. Friends play so strong a part to have us in their prayers, their minds and in their hearts. And God directs his children if we will let him lead. He'll send a special friend who always will be we need. God gives us special friends, forever friends, who know just what to say. God gives us special friends to walk with us along life's way. And oh, how great to know, as on we go, there's someone there to share, someone who cares. God gives us special friends who always will be there. Oh. friend to show us that he cares. God gives us special friends, forever friends, who know just what to say. God gives us special friends to walk with us along life's way. And oh, how great to know as on we go, there's someone share someone who cares. God gives us special friends who always will be there. And oh, how great to know as on we go, there's someone there to share someone who cares. God gives us special friends who Blessing that was. Praise the Lord. You know, even when you don't necessarily have a friend in the church, which I praise God we have plenty of friends in the church, but for someone who's across the seas or wherever they're at, you still have Jesus. And man, he can be your best friend this morning if he isn't already. Um, I want you to take your hymnal with me. We're going to have our offering in just a moment. We're going to sing another song this morning, number 58. Number 58, if you'll stand up together with me. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Aren't you glad for that this morning? Jesus loves me. As the song says, there will never be a sweeter story. Let's try this together. Number 58, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? There will never be a sweeter story. Story of the Savior's love divine. Love that brought him from the realms of glory. Just to save a simple soul. Lift it up now. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful it is to me. Boundless as the universe around me, reaching to the farthest soul away. Saving, keeping love, it was about me. That is why my heart can truly say, I want to hear you now, ready? This is the love of Love beyond 
beyond our human comprehending. The love of God in Christ, how can it be? Good, now sing it out. Redeeming love of Calvary. Wonderful it is to me. Great singing. You may be seated. We'll go ahead and have our offering this morning. And before I pray, I just wanted to make sure that the Lord is going to chasten that person that cheated yesterday. <laughs> Send the Holy Spirit so that he might repent, that uh, dear Carrie might be able to forgive that lazy person that cheated so badly <laughs> yesterday. But uh, uh-huh. in all seriousness, we just thank you so much for the opportunity yesterday. Amen. Dear precious Heavenly Father, again, we thank you so much as we can just come together as a church family, as friends. Yes. Lord, that we can support one another, that we can lift one another up, and that we can remember those that are of a distance to us. Lord, there's no distance too great for you, though. Mm. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity of salvation. We thank you so much for the promise of salvation. Lord, we thank you so much for it being so easy. Yes. Lord, thank you for the warriors that are out here on the streets every day across the world spreading your gospel. But we just ask that we might take some of the what you've given to us, give it to them, that we might further your kingdom. And we pray for all of these things in Christ's dear and precious name. Amen. 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 Amy and I wanted to, actually, Amy brought this to me um, and was asking if we could sing this this morning. Um, Dad is going to be preaching a specific message this morning, and she wanted to sing this uh, to kind of go along with the message. How vast beyond all measure That he should give his only son To make a wretch his treasure How great the pain of searing loss The father turns his face away As wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon his cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know it is finished 
Anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I give from His reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. But this I know with all my heart. How deep the Father's love for Off of mute. There we go. Now I can hear it. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. You're good for something sometimes. I think so. No, he's my buddy. And my John, my son, is my buddy. My daughter is here. And my other daughter, Amy, and daughter Sarah, and adopted in my heart, Jessica and Brian. Yeah, and I know she's my niece and her husband. Quinn and uh, Clara and Grayson and Ms. Dawn is back in the back with Junior Church this morning, my wife. So I have a lot of reasons to say praise the Lord, you know. I really do. I, I had cancer and they told me I couldn't have kids uh, later on. And uh, we have four children and two grandchildren and a third one on the way. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about that. God is so good and God does love us with a very deep love. 1 Corinthians 13 is one of the greatest chapters on the subject of love in the entire Bible. And we're going to take and go step by step through parts of it. And uh, I hope it will be a blessing to you today. I really do. I want to read to you just a, uh, a little springboard text before I get into 1 Corinthians 13. In Romans chapter 5, the Bible says, Therefore, being justified by faith. And that's the only way you can be justified in God's sight, made right in God's sight. We're all old sinners. We're all born in sin. We have a sinful nature. And you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Before I got saved, I was an old sinner dead in trespasses and sins. And only Christ's resurrection and through what he did at the cross can give me that resurrection spiritually and then, of course, that guarantee of that resurrection physically. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Before I was at enmity with God, the Bible says. I was an enemy of, the, of God because of my rebellion and turning away from God as a sinner. He said, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through what he did at the cross. By whom, by Jesus also, we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Every, every child of God in here is nothing more than a sinner saved by grace, God's matchless grace. It doesn't stop there. Look what takes place in our lives, because every one of us in this room, in name the name of Jesus Christ, go through tribulations and trials and struggles, some greater, some not as great, some less, sometimes it gets worse. 
The Bible says right after it says, wherein we stand in this hope of the glory of God and this grace. The Bible says then, and not only so, not only this grace and this hope we have in Jesus Christ. He said, but we glory in tribulations. That's one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Is to glory when I'm going through pain and suffering and trials. But notice what it's supposed to do for me. God has a purpose and a plan. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation, it does something for us. Trouble, if you handle it correctly, it's not the problems in life, it's how you handle the problems in life. Trouble, if it's handled correctly, will work some, work some things for you. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. You ever go through a trial in your life and you just, you're so anxious about what's going to take place and you just don't know what's going to take place and fear's on one side and, and you're scared half to death and you don't know what's going to be going on, you know? Well, the Bible says it works, it works patience in your life. And then it says, and patience, it does something, it brings experience. You will go through some things in your life. We all go through struggles and trials, but you'll go through some struggles and trials in this life that will bring experience in your life. And that experience will then bring hope. How do you figure that, preacher? Because you're going to come out on the other side. And that experience is going to bring hope. And then the one verse I wanted to go to right after that, verse number 5 of Romans 5, and hope maketh not ashamed. You ever go through a trial and you had to have patience to go through it and then you got the experience of going through it and, it, and you handled it correctly according to the way God wanted you to handle it and you gained hope in your life? Well, it doesn't end there. I did not see this until the last couple weeks. I've been saved for 46 years in the ministry over 30 some years. I didn't see this until this last few weeks. And hope maketh not ashamed. Why? Because the love of God. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Suffering is not easy. And it's hard to glory in it. But God's purposes and plans in our lives are for our good and for His glory. And the love of God will be with you through every step of the way. Many years ago, I, we're going over to 1 Corinthians 13. You're already there. Let me get over there with you. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Two things have been a sustenance to me through my trials and my tribulations that caused me to be able to all right, Lord, you said in everything give thanks. I'm going to give thanks through all of this. That's a hard thing to do, give thanks for trouble. But God has a purpose and plan, and God always seals it with his love. And that same love is shed abroad in your heart, believer. And now God has a purpose and plan for that love that's shed abroad in your heart. Let's see what that purpose is in verse number 1. Let's begin there. Everyone's always interested in love, right? If you ask the, the person on the street, what do you think love is? Well, you'll get all kinds of answers. Uh, it could be physical love, emotional love, or everything you could think of, you know. Uh, several different meanings of love. Uh, and we cannot live uh, effective Christian lives until you first understand what is the love of God about that has been shed abroad in your heart. And what is that love going to do for me and do for my family, and then my turn of my love back to God. We love Him because He first loved us. So you study the love of God, and you see how great the love of God is. And then we're going to look at some things here, how love is preeminent over everything. Then we're going to see the performance of that love, and then the permanency of that love that lasts forever. Let's start in verse number 1. Uh, okay. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity or love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Now, you and I think would agree the basic need in life, in the human life, is that we have a need for love and to be loved and to give love, right? Everyone wants to be loved. I remind a little boy who traveled, walked across town. They didn't have any cars at that time. Uh, D.O. Moody had a Sunday school in a church in Chicago. And so the little boy would come walk across a good portion of many blocks to get to this church of 
Moody Memorial Church there in Chicago. And the guy, one of the ushers out in front of the church, he said, young man, where are you from? And he told him where he was from. He said, you walked a far piece to get over to this church today, didn't you? He said, I sure did. He said, young man, don't you know there's like four or five other churches on the way? You could have just gone on over to, to one of those, you know? He said, why did you come all the way over here? He said, well, sir, it's because they love a fellow over here. The love of Jesus Christ spread through his people, shed abroad in their hearts is more important than we'll ever really know. And God will use your love to share with each one here in this room and beyond these walls as lost, the lost need to hear the love of God to their soul. All right. Everyone wants to be loved. Boy, I, I tell you, this last weekend, Brother Johnny Curran went on to be with glory, to heaven last Monday night at 1.20 in the morning. I told Miss Carolyn, his wife, I said, you know, uh, I can only count on my one hand the, the amount of people in my life that I, I would really say they were a Christian gentleman. Everybody know Brother Johnny sat right over here, second pew, 83 years young, went on, stepped on into glory. He come into church, whether he had that lymphoma going and all that for the last four years, he was smiling. Miss Carolyn was smiling, sitting next to him, and Miss Carolyn had physical pains and aches. And I say, how are you guys doing today? And they're looking up at me, sitting in the pew, just a smiling. We're doing all right, preacher. Amen. With lymphoma. It finally killed him. With, with Miss Carolyn's aches and pains and hurting. I said, now you're in church, uh, folks. You better tell me the truth, okay? And we laugh about it a little bit. I went down Thursday. My wife and I drove to Lumberton, North Carolina, and did Johnny's funeral out in a, in a family cemetery plot. The Ivy uh, Cemetery. Uh, they did the uh, honor guard, uh, Elizabeth, but it was seniors that did the honor guard. Robeson County veterans did it. I'd never seen it before in all my life. The way they did it, they started off, and you guys, you, our military folks can tell me, they start off with roll call. Some of you seen the roll call? I know we've, we've been in funerals and folks, have, we've had funerals here and we've seen the military funerals and I've been a part in officiating several of them, but I'd never seen the roll call. They call out the names of those men standing there and they had their guns in their hands and they're going to do a, a, a salute, a three volley salute. And there was Johnny and the family and that precious wife, tears coming down from her eyes. 56 years of marriage, she loved her husband. Faithful, loved her husband, and he loved her. John is not a, a loud voiced man, he was a quiet man. That's why I call him a Christian gentleman. And there we are. And they say, they called out a name, and one of the honor guards say, present. Or, and they called another name, present, present. They called out Johnny Curran. No answer. Johnny Curran, they called out the second time. No answer. Johnny Curran, the third time. One of the soldiers said, he's gone on to a higher place. Glory to God. The very love of God that he experienced in his life because he knew Jesus Christ as his Savior is the same love of God he's going to experience when he, gets to, when he got to glory the other day. The love of God and the truth of God's Word have been the two things that have been sustaining influences, impacts in my life. It started as, as a child in Sunday school. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus is love, and the Bible telling me He loves me has sustained me through every trial I've ever gone through. Because, as we read those verses to you a little bit ago, that same love of God has been shed abroad in my heart. It has sustained me. Great is the Father's love is the song they just sang. All right, let's look at the preeminence of his love. He said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love or charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. I'm nothing better than just a ganging uh, thing of cymbals clanging back and forth and back and forth if I don't have an experience and have the love of God in my life. 
All right? He says there, he does, he says, he indicates there in verse number one, though I speak with the tongues of men, this is talking about speaking in tongues. Now this is not, I repeat this, this is not the speaking in tongues that you hear in some churches today. And you're going to learn from this passage that speaking in tongues stopped, and it stopped after the first, sec, first second century because there was no longer need for speaking in tongues. These were actual tongues or languages that were spoken to get the gospel out, and it was a sign to the unbelieving Jews, especially. And the Bible says that they will cease. Whether they be tongues, they shall cease. It's in this chapter. And tongues is mentioned in chapter 12, and it's mentioned in chapter 14. Paul says that it's the lowest of all the gifts. He said, I want you to covet the higher gifts. What were they? The gifts of prophecy, and he lists several ones there. He's not saying that I didn't speak in tongues. He said, yeah, I spoke in tongues. But it, when I did speak in tongues in those languages so people could hear, if I didn't do it with love, I'm just like a bunch of clanging cymbals. It's meaningless. It's not profitable, if you please. He condemns not the use of the gift, but he condemns the gift without love is what he does. And the gift, by the way, it was stopped. And the modern day gift of, of modern day speaking of tongues is not of God today. Boy, preacher, you're getting kind of hot and heavy, aren't you? It started right around the turn of the 1900s. And I'm not going to get into all the details of it. But this gibberish that you hear in churches, people, la, 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 that's not in the Bible. It's not in the book. Let's look at the Scriptures. Let's see what God has to say. Now, He's not against these certain tongues that He's speaking. Verse 2. And we're talking about the preeminence of love in the exercising of our gifts and abilities that God gives us. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, these are some of the higher gifts that were at that time. There was not a complete revelation of God's Word at that time. And all knowledge, a gift of knowledge. And though I have all faith, even faith, he says, so that I could remove mountains and have not love or charity, I am nothing. He said, I want you to look at the higher gifts, these other gifts. Even the higher gifts, if they're not exercised in love, are, it profits me nothing. Love is the basis and the foundation of all gifts that God gives to His church through His people in order to exercise that gift. If you exercise the gift and talents and abilities that God has given you without love as being the foundation of that gift, it's profiting you nothing. All right, now hold on. We'll get some good news here coming, okay? Uh, as we go along, he says, The highest gift he talks about in verse number 3, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, Ladies and gentlemen, that is the highest gift that an individual can give. It's called martyrdom. It's called being a martyr. And these folks there in that day and time in the early church knew exactly what that meant. Give their bodies to be burned. We don't see much of it here in the United States. But around the world there are a lot of Christians who are slain because of their faith in the Lord Jesus. We need to do a lot more praying for them. And it says, though I give my body to be burned and have not charity or love, it profits me nothing. Again, it does not profit me anything. And knowing that this great love, this exercising of giving my life, you think, surely, that that would be enough. But if we don't do it in the spirit of love, God's Word says it doesn't profit us anything. Mar martyrdom without love is unprofitable. And he goes on, he says, let's look at verse number, uh, number four. We're going to get into the performance of love and the characteristics of love. And I'm going to try to give those in detail. If you've got a little pen you like to write in your Bible, I'm going to give you a few definitions of these things as we go along the way. And then you have that and put it in your life, okay? Look at verse number four. Charity or love suffereth long. You know, it's long-suffering to us. It, it exercises uh, it keeps back our actions because when we want to strike back, we become long-suffering with each other and with those maybe outside the church who are not saved. It forbears them. It forgives them. That's long-suffering. 
And we need to be long-suffering. And the only way you can have that is the love of God shed abroad in your heart. All right? And then it says there, and it's kind. What does it mean when it says kind? It's exercising self-restraint in the face of provocation. Someone provokes you, and you're ready to strike back, but you hold back with the love of God in your heart. That's showing the kindness of God through the love of God. And then it says, also, so it's, Love means that we're not jealous of others or envious of others or the positions or possessions. It says, envieth not. Verse 4 again, love envieth not. Uh, love also doesn't show off. What's the next phrase there? Is not puffed up, uh, not vaunteth not at itself, is not puffed up. Never, he's not showing yourself off in the vaunting, if you please, of yourself. You're not looking out for yourself, you're looking out for others. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I know Dr. Davis is coming. I'm not trying to steal his thunder. But the greatest sin in the family is selfishness. You want your home to break up? I can tell you how to do it. You say, preacher, I already know how to do that. Well, you know how I do it? Selfishness. I want it my way, my time, and the way, and my how. What's the cure for it? The love of God. Thinking of the other person. Jesus Christ always thought of the other person. Yes, sometimes he was firm, but he did it in love. And that same love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. The performance of that love is not to show off, not to be um, vaunting, if you please, and not puffed up. What does that mean? That's like walking around kind of, you watch up here, look, here you go, kind of puffed up in pride. Do you know Paul is dealing with a situation here in this same, this same book? Corinth had a lot of problems had a lot of carnal problems. Paul dealt with one in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Don't turn there. But he talks and he rebuked the church in love, speaking the truth in love. He rebuked the church. He said, some, said, some of you are having fornication and some of you are puffed up in this area and some of you, the, the, some of you are having relations with your own stepmother. Some of your men are having relations with your own stepmother. That was pretty vile. Fornication, pretty vile. And Paul rebukes them over that. He said, and instead of, instead of dealing with the situation in the church, and this person has done this, and they need to, they need to come back to the Lord and, and repent and get right with God over the situation, but if they're not going to do that, then yes, there is church discipline to, to get them to see that they are wrong. But it's in love. And he said, you, you folks are so puffed up. It's almost you're proud of the fact that sin is rampant in the church. They knew exactly what Paul was talking about. He had just used the word just seven, uh, uh, eight chapters ago. Okay? So be careful that we can't be puffed up. Uh, love does not do that. Love is not proudful. It doesn't seek his own. A love and conduct. Let's look at love and conduct. Verse number five. It does not behave itself unseemly. Now, what in the world does that mean? Love conducts itself well in the presence of other believers. It's not going to do something that's unseemly. It has good manners, shows pity, shows compassion. 1 Peter 3, 8, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful or compassionate, and be courteous. That's why I said Johnny Curran was a Christian gentleman. And as believers, we've got to learn our Christian conduct. You know, we need to get back to old-fashioned manners. Come on now. It don't hurt to say thank you, no thank you, ma'am, or please, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. You know? Well, I wasn't raised in that. In, uh, I was raised up north. Can I go there a little while? Can I do that a little bit? No, I tell you. <laughs> so you got, and they're saying, Brian's saying amen because his wife is from Ohio and he's from Tennessee. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. We're in church. You got me off my, the subject here, Miss Jackie. Good night. All right, love and the conduct that we have. 
Love ought to be something that is not self-seeking. Look at the next part of that verse. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own. Seeketh not her own. Chrysostom, one of the great early writers of the early church, said, As a spark which falls into the sea hurts not the sea, but is itself extinguished, so an evil thing befalling a loving soul will be extinguished. I've, said, I've watched a lot of uh, spouses put up a lot from other, their spouses. And they could only do that because the love of God was shed abroad in their heart. Thank God for the love of God. And that love uh, extinguishes, if you please, the sparks of hatred. Uh, I've seen people say some pretty bad words to folks. I heard some things I, I wish I'd never heard. Sometimes I've said things I shouldn't have said. Sometimes I'll go to Miss Dawn and say, Honey, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Some of you guys try to do that, don't you? I, 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 Finally get them words out, I'm sorry. Yeah, that'll save your home a lot too because it's got to come out of love. And ladies, sometimes we have to, you have to say a little sorry too, right? That's what we're talking about, the performance of love. God's love in your heart will help you to do that. Um, let's lean on God's love. Uh, love covers a multitude of sin, the Bible says. Hatred stirreth up strife, Proverbs 10, 12. But love covereth all sins, Proverbs 17, 9. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. You want to cause a problem between you and a friend? Uh, Elizabeth and Amy sang about special friends. You want to lose a friend? I can tell you how to do it. You bring up something that they've done that's maybe hurt you or whatever, and yet you've forgiven them, and you bring it up again and again and again, you're going to separate yourself from your friend. But love doesn't do that. 1 Peter 4, 8, And above all things have fervent love, fervent charity. That means hot, on fire love among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. You don't think that... That dear spouse did the thing that they ought to, should have done the right way or in your mind the right way. Maybe you think that husband's leading in the wrong direction, ladies, and you think, well, am I going to still follow him? And I know we're not going to fall into, not lead to sin. I understand that. But sometimes people say things they ought not say, and it's wrong. Sometimes they do some things they ought not do. Sometimes they don't do some things they ought to do. Are you just going to keep bringing it up and, and causing problems between yourself and your spouse? Or are you going to yield it to the Lord and let the love of God just extinguish the sparks? It'll save you a lot of heartache. It really will. I'm not talking about if something is major needs to be dealt with. Love and rejoicing. Verse 6, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. When we're truly motivated by a heart of love... We don't take pleasure in watching other believers fall. A brother or sister has been serving the Lord and for a number of years, and then they do something they shouldn't have done, and, and they fall. Other believers should rally around them and help them get back to where they need to be. Right. Out of love. The love of God will teach It teaches us to do that. All of us were fallen sinners. And Christ Jesus came. And God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That He gave His only begotten Son. We need to give of ourselves to each other. Uh, but some of us have gotten to the place where love is, at the, is not at the, the foundation of our lives. And it needs to be. Uh, John said, and then it says here, um, re But rejoiceth in the truth. Can't you rejoice when something good is done with a brother or sister? In Christ? Can't you rejoice when something's good happening to a family member? Oh, but preacher, I, that should have happened to me. Oh, wait a minute. Why are you thinking of only yourself? Why don't you try to love that other person and rejoice when something good happens to them? Hey, husbands and wives, again, I'm not trying to steal from Dr. Davis, but if you can't rejoice if something good happens to your wife, and you can't rejoice, wives, if something good happens to your husband, you got some problems. And you're going to have some major problems if you don't get the love of God in there. 
Because of the love of God, you are one together. The Bible says that husbands and wives are one flesh. If you rail against the other spouse, then you're railing against that one flesh that God has made you into being. When you said, I do, and he said, I do, or she said, I do, you're one flesh. Let the love of God flow through your heart to your spouse. We need more of God's love in our lives. Love and then rejoicing in that which is truth. We don't, we're not there to condemn. To each of us we stand to our master, the Lord Jesus. And then love, he said, lastly in verse 7, he says, Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Love does all of those things. Beareth all things. Love compels a believer to go the extra mile. Sometimes you've got to go through a situation in your, your life. We'll just go back to the family a little bit here. You've got to go back to a situation in your family. You've got to bear it a little bit longer. How are you going, how are you going to do that, preacher? The love of God. It's been shed abroad in your heart. Uh, it bears all things, all evils and wrongs done to, that, to a believer. It's not going to stop the heart of love that's in that believer. Love believes all things. We're not, that doesn't mean we're gullible, ladies and gentlemen. It tries to look for the best in others. It tries to believe the best in the other person, you know, instead of looking for the worst in everybody. You remember where I held up a, a thing? I had a big white poster board I brought out one time. I was going to do that this morning, but I decided not to. And I took a little marker. I was standing down there, and I took a little marker, and I put a little black dot in the middle. And I held up that poster board, and I asked everybody, I said, what do you see? And everybody agreed. They said, I, we see a little black dot in the middle of the poster board. I said, I do, I do too. He said, but did you see all that white around it, the little black dot? We're always trying to look for that little black dot and pick and, at each other in, in our homes. Sometimes even the church house it can happen. But the love of God will extinguish that. It doesn't make an excuse for sin. But the love of God believeth and beareth all things. And we look for where it says, and <clears throat> not only beareth and believeth all things, but hopeth all things. Love hopes for all things. Love thinks of the best expectations always. Love and discouragement cannot go together. Did you hear that one? Think on that one a little while. Love and discouragement, a discouraging attitude, are never partners together. When the clouds look the darkest is when love rises to the situation and hope rises to the occasion. And it's only can happen, ladies and gentlemen, if it's by love. You see, all these gifts that he talked about had to be exercised by love. And the only way you're going to exercise the gifts in your family, in your home, is going to have to be done by love. If you, if you treat each other the most wonderful thing, you take them out to, to I don't know, what's a restaurant this afternoon? Anybody got a favorite restaurant? McDonald's. <laughs> and get one of them giant ham, made, um, Wendy's, Joey. We talked about your hamburger yesterday. Wendy's, get one of them big triple stacks three times over. And you, boy, that would be great. But if it's not done in a loving attitude, loving spirit, it doesn't profit you anything. Oh, preacher, it'll profit me. I'll get to latch on that hamburger. Well, I agree with you on that part too. But it's not going to profit you. We, and then it says, love endures all things. Love never faileth. Mm. Paul knew about that very much. I was going to go into that, but I'm not going that far. And then lastly, the permanence of love. The preeminence of love, the performance of love, and now the preeminence of love, verses 8 through 13. Love and passing. Love never faileth. Love will never fade away. Love, or ne love never fails. All those spiritual gifts that he was talking about, he said they're going to stop. But love's not going to stop, okay? Verse number 8, love never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, that's one of the higher gifts, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease, and they did. And it never says about it starting up again. Whether there be knowledge or word of knowledge, it shall vanish away. Okay, knowledge, even the knowledge that mankind has would disappear. Just like a, a star getting closer to the sun, you can't see the star anymore. 
It'll disappear, if you please. And love, and not only a passing, but the perfection of love. Look at verse number 9. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. What's he talking about there? He's talking about these special gifts that are supposed to be done in love, right? He said they're going to stop. What does the Bible mean when it says, when that which is perfect is come? Okay? That which is perfect. That which is perfect. Is come. He's talking about. He's talking about a neuter noun here. He's not talking about uh, Jesus. There's only two perfect things, ladies and gentlemen. Look up here at me. There's only two perfect things you and I have ever known in life. Okay, one is the Son of God, by faith in Him and putting our faith and trust in Him. He's the perfect living Word. The second most perfect thing that you and I will ever come across is the Bible, the Word of God. The written word. Perfect. Perfect God the Son. Perfect word of God. Is he talking here about the Son of God? Mm -mm. He's not talking about that here. He's talking about the perfect word that it will come and these other gifts will be done away with. And that's why we don't have someone get up and give a word of knowledge. We don't have people speaking in tongues. We don't have people uh, doing these other things, the different gifts that are listed in chapter 12 and chapter 14. Because the Word of God is complete now. The canon of Scripture has been completed. And now we have a more sure word of prophecy. Do we not? Yes, we do. 2 Peter 1, the Bible says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, Whereunto we do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved, borne along by the Holy Ghost. It is the Word of God and the Spirit of God using His Word in our hearts. And we have a more sure word of prophecy, Peter says, even more than these gifts. But whether if we were back in those days and the gifts were still going on, we still have to exercise it all in the foundation of the love of God. We're not to brag on ourselves, be puffed up, or vaunt ourselves. We're to, to know that we're doing this to honor the Lord. And in love and permanency, look at verse number 10, verse number 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, not all the Bible was complete in his time. We see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And the infallible word of God. And we can put our faith and trust in the Word of God. And the, the Word of God is, is permanent. And the love of God is permanent, permanent. Look at verse 13. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. He's dealing with a permanence there, if you please. And that these three are permanent but you cannot exercise the first two faith and hope without love being the foundation of your faith and without love being the foundation of your hope and that's why it says that the greatest of these is love I want you to do something with me okay go back to chapter 13, and I want you to go to verse number 4. And every time we use the word love or charity, I want you to, we're going to read it out loud. We're going to read it down from verse number 4 to the beginning of verse number 8. Okay? I want you to, the Bible says in 1 John that God is love. All these actions, all these things that we are to do with God's love in our hearts shed abroad. Now let's see 
Does God do that for us? I want you to replace the word charity with the word God. I'm not trying to change the Bible, but I want you to see that God is love. Look at verse number 4. All right, can you say it out loud with me together? Let's read the text out loud together from verse 4 down to the beginning of verse number 8. Take the word charity and replace it with the word God. God suffereth long and is kind. God envieth not. God vaunteth not himself, is not puffed up, doth not behave himself unseemly, seeketh not his own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. God beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. God never faileth. Now, we're going to go back through that same passage, and we're going to change the word out again. God's our example. and God so loved the world that He gave His Son to die for our sins. Now, I want you to, today, put your first name where charity is. I'm going to say John. Okay, my first name is John. So let's do that together. Here we go. Verse 4. John suffereth long and is kind. John envieth not. John vaunteth not himself, is not puffed up. John doth not behave himself unseemly, seeketh not his own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. John never faileth. I know we sin every day, folks. I understand that. And we sin against, against this great love of God. But the only way you and I are going to have victory in Christ in this world is knowing that you are justified by faith in Jesus. And what are the last three things he said in verse 13? The greatest of these is love. There's now abide of faith, hope, and love. Do you have faith in Christ? Are you born again? Do you know if you died, you'd go to heaven? Are you 100% sure that, if, that heaven's your home? I was in the funeral the other day, and I was talking. Brother Johnny had wanted me when he passed away to give the gospel to his family and to the folks at that funeral. And again, he was 83, and there was probably a good 80 people there. And that's unusual today in a funeral, ladies and gentlemen. As a person is older, most of the time you might, you might see 50 people there at the most. And there was 80-some folks there. And I said to them on behalf of Johnny, I said, I asked them a question. I said, do you know for sure that if you died, you'd go to heaven? I said, don't answer out loud, but in your heart. Do you know? The Bible teaches you can know for sure. And Jesus came and died and paid for our sins so that we can know for sure. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that ye have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, is it God's will to save you? We know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him, the Bible goes on to say. You can know that you're sure you're saved. And then I said, I want you to ask you a second question. If you stood at heaven's gate and they asked you why you should be entered in or allowed into heaven, what would be your answer? If it's anything other than what the love of God sent His Son to die for my soul and paid for my sins and I've trusted Him as my Savior, uh, then we won't make it in. You cannot work your way to heaven. There are no big scales up there where the good outweighs the bad. Baptist, I'm a Baptist preacher, but that water back there is not going to cleanse away your sin. Joining a church doesn't, and I believe in church membership. The Bible teaches it, and I believe in it, but it does not get you into the portals of heaven. Only the great love of God in Christ and what He did for us at Calvary. And now, if you're saved, Christian, that same love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. So let's leave this place today 
or the idea of sharing that love of God in our family, in our workplace, at school, in Walmart, at Chick-fil-A even. There are lots of people who go into Chick-fil-A, believe it or not. I worked at Chick-fil-A. I understand that. Oh, my dear friend, let's rejoice in God's love today. Some of you know you got Valentine's in a couple of days. Have you got anything planned for your wife? Uh-oh, now you're going to meddling, preacher. You got anything planned for your husband? You going to do anything nice for them? Show kindness to them? Love to them? You got the love of God in your heart. Don't be selfish with it. Let's share it with one another, okay? And that's what I love about our church. It's a church that loves one another. Let's bow for prayer. As Amy's coming to the piano to play a verse of invitation, here we just simply uh, make available to come to, if you don't know Christ and you want to know for sure you're going to heaven, you could come this morning and the great love of God will save your soul. Uh, you're coming to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. You're not getting get baptized or joining a church membership. You're coming to Jesus. A man with a man, a woman with a woman will take the Bible, the truth of God's Word, and tell you how to be born again. You can be saved today. You can have the peace of God in your heart. The love of God shed abroad in your heart. To help you through those trials and those tribulations. And God's word will do it. And God's love will do it. Please stand with heads bowed and eyes closed. Won't you come? Come to the Savior today. Don't go away without Jesus is an old song. Don't go away without Him. Come to Christ today. Maybe there's some words that have been spoken that have not been in love in your home. Maybe there's been some, some actions in your life at work or wherever it's been and you have not showed the love of Christ. Why don't you ask God to forgive you and ask Him to help you shed His love further in your heart and help out others and do for others and point them to Jesus. Let's point them to Christ. Sons to glory, how deep the Father's love, sons to glory. How deep the Father's love, it'll bring many sons to glory. There's a song they sang earlier. Are you one of the sons and daughters of God? You can be. You have assurance in your heart that if something happened to you, you go to be with the Lord. Christ is the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And that's all been paid with the love of God. Let's rejoice today, Christian. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things. Amen. Okay. Okay, you can look up this way. Okay. So tonight, come on back. Choir, 5 o'clock, practice, and...
choir did a good job, didn't they, this morning? One, they do a good job any, all, all the time. Are they a good one this morning? I love that song. And then tonight, we we're going to start off the service at 6 o'clock with a song. We're, we're going to do the evening offering, and we'll because that's what we normally do. And then we will go right into Dr. Davis. It'll be a message about uh, maybe you as an older parent, you have a, a child, as an adult child, who's gotten away from the Lord. And you want to know how to handle that and how to be a help to your child or your grandchild. Uh, be a good message for all of us. As we pray with a brother or sister that's struggling uh, with a child like that. How many times has Miss Sandy, Miss Sandy, are you watching this morning from Texas? How many times have you said, pray for my, my children and my grandchildren? They're not saved. Miss mm. Katie, I can hear her now. She's in heaven now. She's sat on that back corner. Please pray for my children to be saved. She raised them in church. Yeah, but you can go away without Jesus and uh, not be saved. But the hope is in Christ, so come to Him. Amen? So tonight we'll do that. And then Wednesday night, of course, service, 7 o'clock, Bible study, prayer, and we got things going for the young people on Wednesday nights. And then on Saturday night, couples night, there's a list out there. Sign up on the couples list. I don't know how many have signed up so far. 26 have signed up. Couples or individuals? 13 couples, 26 individuals. So avail yourself of that. Uh, don't miss out on every opportunity to hear God's Word and know more of the love of God in your heart and life, and especially in that relationship of, of husband and wife. Um, and then Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, Sunday morning, 11 o'clock service, Sunday night, 6 o'clock, Dr. Davis will be doing all the services. We'll give him plenty of time. He'll have 100, 150 pictures for every message he preaches. We'll have it up on the screen. So it should be a powerful day, and we're looking forward to it, okay? All right. <clears throat> Okay, Brian, would you close us in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, Lord, we are out of for you. Allow us to come to church today, Lord, to connect to the Lord, and we'll be up here. Thank you for the truth of our 